Oh, hello my OBS friends. Today we're gonna go on a Super Duty Seat adventure. Follow along. Let's talk about Super D seats. We're gonna give you guys a step-by-step -step on how we take apart our Super D seat, lower assembly, and remove these brackets and install our brackets. We're also gonna show you guys a little bit about how we check our wiring for the motor, make sure it works, all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned, we're gonna do step-by-step -step for you. Remove the plastic caps on the end of the tracks. We drill out the, the rivet. Next thing I'm gonna do is I always wanna have uh, track assembly centered up as low as possible. I do that by using a power probe. I give it 12 volts and ground. So I give it ground on this side and this is in the instructions on what pin does what. So I'm gonna center it up and then I'm gonna lower it. Oop, that's, hot. that's raising it. So once I do that, I'll lower it all the way to the ground as close as I can. And then we'll... Bastards and the noises. Then we'll take this part of the track off. We'll show you that next. We will use a big hammer and tap this guy out. Once I have pried the gear out of the tube, and just kind of over you. You see how it's like a rectangle shank. If you are gonna run uh, your OE seat belts, get rid of this guy and cut this guy off. It's in the instructions. That'll give you enough clearance to run your factory seat belts. If you wanna run the Super Duty seat belts, you want to leave this guy on here and the support bracket. You do have to punch this stud out though to run a bolt. It gets really tight against the console and the seat. We suggest run factory seat belts when you can. So next, oh shoot dang. I just put that back in there. <laughs> I had this guy popped out. You gotta take this snap ring out and it is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, you are gonna need some snap ring pliers. There we go. Now, we're gonna pop out. I call it a buffer spring. I'm not sure what Ford calls it, but that's what we're gonna call it. We're gonna pop this off. And then last but not least, we're going to tap the gear out of this, which <laughs> you need to. Slide this keeper out like this. Now we can actually manip uh, manipulate the rail back and forth to grind out these rivets and get rid of these legs. So we're going to slide it this direction. You can't go the other way because it'll actually the leg will hit the bottom here of this flange. So we're just going to... And there we go, got it. So we will grind these guys off and that rivet off, take the actual track off, and then punch the back side of these rivets out after our bolts go through. So Mr. Tanner has ground out the rivets off of our track, no longer there. He then cleaned up the, the rail system and the gear set. So let's say, I'm going to touch on something. Let's say you get things mixed up. Like, oh my God, I don't know where this went. I, oh my gosh. So real quick though, don't stress. These guys have a beveled edge on the outside. And there's two stops. They're actually the same gear. Just they put the stops at the different ends. So all you do is you sandwich them together. And you have a stop at this end and this end. That's how you know you have the right direction. The other thing is, let's say I don't know which way this guy goes. Like, oh my gosh, the inner track to the outer track. Let's say you freak out. Like, how's this go? Don't stress. This is where your actual drive gear went in. It will not go, it will not line up this way. But it will this way, so we know that. That gets us back to there. Next is our legs. Now, the rear has two holes and the front has one. You can't swap it. It only goes one way. Our legs bolt on like this. 
so you can't mess those up either and we're labeled which leg is which so that helps you guys out we're gonna install some bolts through here kind of mock it up and show you how that works let's assemble everything now on this side of the track system so I say so. I, we use a inch inch we use a three eighths by inch and a quarter long bolt it actually slides right in there it actually will go into the area where the rivet used to be then our loom grommet or spacer or collar whatever you want to call it used to be a polymer one in there and we actually oversize these a little bit so if your gear set is wallered out due to age we made this a little bit larger so you can file it down a little bit it should float inside that actual gear set now before I put this together I'll put this leg on is our front leg this like this this and like this now I'm just gonna snug this up so it actually float and kind of pivot and the reason we want to do that is when we go to set it on the truss that it'll actually have a little bit of wiggle room they're gonna slide this guy in. oh by the way clear grease in this track system after you get all uh, cleaned up helps a lot now I just want to get this guy far enough that I can actually get to these two holes <laughs> two holes Okay, now here's where it changes. We do a lovely 3 8 by a quarter back here. Let me throw this guy. Down. I'll leave that a little bit loose. We'll then run. Oops. The wheels are coming off this train, Tanner. Well, hell, there we go. Now I've got it all snugged up. Okay. Next one will show you this guy going back onto that track system. Before we go any further, make sure this little keeper is slid in there before you slide your gear in. So I'll, guys in, I know this is straight up and down, so I'm gonna actually try to get as close as I can to straight up and down. Put the snap ring on. together with this guy obviously we gotta line everything up if you can see I'm a little bit off so you can actually take a little pair of pliers I like to put something underneath the other end before I start smacking on it I don't want to damage the plastic of the transmission so I put a piece of a, a metal or aluminum in this case underneath the other side gear I'll tap it in a little bit of white grease on there does a awesome job now Tanner get in here if you look you want to get these collars there's one there and there's one here we want to get those lined up so it sits down in there as you're tapping this guy down you can hear it kind of change tone. So I know I'm all the way down. Put the nuts on. And then make sure we put our little buffer spring back on after we're done. And we'll start working on the other side. This little buffer spring can be kind of tough. So, and then I'll take a screwdriver and you have to lip it over the two tracks. Okay. Next side. Unlike the other side, this guy we don't take fully apart to get the legs off. Uh, what we do is we'll grind the heads of the rivets off and then we'll pull the, the actual gear set off of it, leave the inner gear on, 
and then we'll slide the rail out one end, grind the rivet off, or grind the rest of the rivet off, and then punch it through, install one of our legs, slide it back the other way, and do the same. We'll kind of give you a one of like how the process goes for that coming up here. We had to switch locations. Oscar was too noisy. So we are going to install. I'm gonna back up. First of all, first of all, you see that we got rid of the legs. Tanner did an amazing job grinding the leg uh, rivets off, punching them through. When you go to when you go to like nail or uh, smack and get the rivet out of there, make sure you support it on the back side. Make sure you grind it flush and then tap it out. A lot of people will like knock off the leg area and there's still a little bit of a lip and you go to bang on that rivet to get it out of there and all you're gonna do is you're gonna bend up the seat track. Or you're gonna be like hitting it like this and it's me flexing. Put something rigid underneath it. Make sure the head is clean off of it before you do that. That was Rivet Talk 101. Bolt, we're going to use the, just like we did on the air side, the long uh, 3 8 by inch and a quarter long. We are going to go like this guy. Now, I'm not going to put the bushing on or the, the gear set on yet, and I'll show you why. I'm just going to run this up to snug it up. If the bolt head is sticking past this little valley here, it won't allow the track to slide back. So make sure we just kind of snug it up, and then I'm going to run it back this way just so I have enough clearance to get the bolts on the back side over here. I'm going to do the same thing. This one. And then I'm going to run it up like this. Like the same one here. And I'm going to run this guy. Now, once I've got both of these kind of centered, or I should say, now I got them on, now I'll center this up. And I'll drop this down. Now I can install it. I'll loosen these guys up and install our track, our gear onto the track, so to speak. And this is a little bit where you gotta pay attention because we wanna have our legs perfectly in line. We gotta have both these uh, leg assemblies timed. So how we do that is we'll actually take and we'll just use a straight edge and kind of put up each leg in this case. You can see I'm a little bit off there if you can tell. And so we'll actually move this guy back. He's gotta get close to where both are timed together. Then I'll install the actual gear outer gear onto the track. Make sure we don't forget our little keeper here. And I'll just go like this. Like that. Like this. Now What's awesome is on this side, this is the side that sticks out. So if you were to put this whole track assembly in the truck, and uh, we always put the seat on last. So we get it all set on the truss assemblies. If you ever get it, if like it's off, you can actually just unscrew these two, pull the, the actual gear set off, move it, and put the gear set on. The other side you can't. You have to break the whole track system down. This side you don't. You can actually manipulate it just by, like I said, loosening uh, this these nuts out or take these nuts off and then pulling this whole gear set off move it one tooth and put it back on to get your legs where they want to be and so what you do is just once it tightens up you kind of get everything where it needs to be easy peasy don't forget your clip this guy right here make sure it gets uh, put back on there so we'll get this all snugged up and then show you it going on to the truss assembly so Oscar and Tanner want to make sure to show you guys how these go on that's easy. Make sure that we leave these loose for going on our truss assemblies so they can pivot a little bit and then tighten them up after the fact. We are here in the lovely test cab. Uh, one thing I want to mention to everyone is first thing, this cab has no carpet in it just because we use it for R&D, other products, developments, that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you real quick. We did the pocket in this floor. You don't have to. You can dimple it with a hammer for the truss to actually clear this corner. 
what we do is we give you this little pocket you then seam seal it so it's all sealed up watertight all that kind of give you a play-by-play -play. we're going to show you kind of how the truss system goes together and the seats on here step by step on the process so uh, we're getting ready to set the front truss in for the front seat. First thing you're going to do is you're going to throw in the elevator bolts that we have. They go in the square holes that have been lasered out on this truss. Now, normally our carpet's back over this, so you wouldn't have just a blank floor. Your carpet is back. This goes over your carpet. I'm going to install it in the factory holes, front and the rear. Same thing with the back. Elevator bolts go in the under, underneath it through the square cut holes. Look, mounts in the factory location. We're gonna put nut on both sides of that. Now, what's cool about this is we made it so it has flexibility to move side to side, front to back on the legs and everything. The reason we did that is because every cab could be like a quarter inch off on the studs at some point. Also, we gave adjustability because we don't know if the cab has had, you know, 25 years of hard abuse, rust in the floor, maybe this bolt's, like, this hole's gotten damaged. We we don't know. So we've kind of given a lot of flexibility. You can see the holes are all lasered in an oval, so it goes side to side, like I said. So, Completed seat track. We're going to drop this guy in here on our elevator studs. This is important. Listen up. We have this in order. It's on the instructions. You do the lower seat track assembly driver side, lower seat track assembly, passenger side, then you do the center console, then you do the seat belts. Follow those steps, it'll make your life really easy. There isn't a lot of space in this cab. So when it comes to shoving everything together, getting everything to fit right, and making sure our seat belts have enough clearance, it's a bad day if you do center console, then you do the lower seat track. That's not good. So follow the instructions. We lastly put the top of the seat, the, the seat assembly, on to the seat, the lower seat track assembly. It makes life so much easier. Guys, check this out. If you realize that uh, these seats are identical, driver to passenger, all they did is they flopped them, so motors are outside or on the outside on each on each uh, track assembly. The one thing, also, don't get yourself in a pinch if you get the legs uh, not timed right, like this leg this leg assembly is further back than the than the inner one all you do is you take these two bolts out pop this clip off this track comes off it allows you to adjust the leg forward or back and you can pop it back on you put your uh, buffer spring back on the other thing I want to show you guys is we've noticed some cabs where we get a little bit lower uh, on the stud back here maybe it's because it's old has some wear and tear so if your seat assembly is sagging or not 100% level, we give you sh uh, laser cut shims. And we give you four per kit so you can put them underneath the base area where it goes to the truss. Now, we suggest you know no more than two uh, per side, but um, we'll let you guys mess with that. You can put them in the front or the back depending on what you need. Kind of showing you guys the underside of our center console. It's literally the easiest part of this kit. You unbolt the factory brackets and you bolt these guys up. Super easy. We'll get you some pictures of that. It's all in the instructions too. Now remember before you put the center console in make sure that you have the nuts and bolts on the studs for the, the lower seat track assemblies. It's very important. The other thing make sure that you don't tighten them all the way. Leave them a little bit loose. Here's our factory seat belts. Now this is really important is the assembly of this thing in the order we're telling you so you can access all these bolts easily. The other thing that's important is your factory seat belts, they come stacked in a certain way. We like to keep it that way. So I'm gonna thread this guy on here. It gets tight. You do the same on the other side. Once you're done with that, after it's down all the way and tight, you're going to slide these shields all the way down to pass this stud. And the reason we want to be past there all the way after it's tight is that way this track assembly can't catch this. We're also going to run it up through this loop too. Kenny brought something up to my attention and I need to mention this to you guys. Before you go any further, you should have your wiring kind of figured out. Um, 
the other thing is you have power seats and heat a lot of these seats have uh, the lumbar circuit has been used before to run your power up and down side to side it's not a big enough circuit to run heat though I would not suggest run heat and power functions off that lumbar circuit if you have it I would run a whole new wiring for those two things um, it's just the circuit's not big enough especially if you have both seats being powered at the same time so remember this video is just to give you guys kind of a lay of the land tips and tricks that kind of stuff we've got the seat the lower seat tracks all in all that wonderful stuff I do still leave kind of the the bolts all loose a little bit until I get everything situated I'll then set our seat in I'll mock it up make sure that the clearances are good pull it back out then retighten all my nuts and bolts everything after that you're pretty much good to go don't forget you gotta put the side plastic on the uh, on each side of the seat other than that we'll go to the back let us start discuss the overview of the back seat the back is really simple brackets bolts to the factory holes in the floor seat belts go in the factory location the one thing I do suggest you do is pull back the carpet and dimple the floor. This is all in the instructions. All you're doing is you're dimpling the floor for where the carriage bolt head rides. It doesn't take much. The other thing is, if you are going to run a setup, uh, seat setup like this that has the tray system in it, you will need to notch that uh, middle leg so it clears the bottom pan of the truck. Real quick, I want to give you one more tidbit here. When you go to install the rear seat, this thing can be heavy, awkward, not want to just sit down in there. We highly suggest flip the seat down and rock it back so that you can slide the front bracket up underneath it and bolt it in. Thanks everyone for following along this little tutorial video about our Super Duty Seat Bracket Kit. Little tips and tricks for you. Any more detailed stuff, it's in our instructions. Check them out. Tons of pictures. Email us if you have any questions. I'm Devin Conahan. Goodbye.